a lot of what I'm going to say comes out of uh, a systematic review that um, colleagues and I are doing currently for the Education Endowment Foundation into professional, teacher professional development. Um, but it also comes from both my experience as a head of professional development in school and subsequently my, my current role, which is helping heads of professional development to, uh, to get better. Um, so we sort of start here. If, if we're putting uh, so many chips on recruiting and training teachers and helping all teachers to improve, we need to make sure that those chips are being, I can't, I can't, I can't follow the metaphor all the way through, the chips are landing in exactly the right place. Um, and the evidence strongly suggests that this is a, a good bet to teacher development in general is a, is a good bet because we know um, that uh, what, what students come out of, the biggest thing that we can do in schools to ensure that they have a successful outcome is influence what happens in the classroom, which depends on teachers. We know that there are some things that, um, you know, there, there are some things that some teachers come into the classroom brilliant at, but we also know that professional development can make a substantial difference to student learning. Um, but we also know that that some professional development works and some doesn't indeed you find the odd evaluation that shows it's had a negative impact on student learning so the time spent really would have been better if the intervention professional development intervention hadn't happened at all so how do we make sure that that what we do uh, here doesn't fall into any of those traps and it really is time and money well spent um and i find it easiest to think about effective professional development as answering three questions well so the first question is um what should students or how do students learn and what can teachers do to influence that the second question is how do teachers change and the third question is well how do we make sure that all the, our good ideas get delivered as we would wish um, and if any of these three elements aren't in place uh, you have a, an intervention that may look very nice, but doesn't have the desired impact. So, for example, you might know exactly what students need. You might have the best idea in the world. But if you don't have an equally good way to help teachers adopt, understand, use and adapt that idea, your idea will remain just an idea. Conversely, you might have a brilliant sort of, I don't know, coaching program that teachers love. But if you're asking teachers to do stuff that isn't the highest leverage, the most powerful stuff you can ask them to do, you're not going to have the desired result. Uh, and equally, and this is something I'm, I'm currently doing a review of implementation reviews as part of my work for the EEF. So I'm reading a lot of things where um, great plans met school reality, which many of us here have experienced uh, and just just fell through. Um, so first of all, theory of student learning, I'm not going to dwell on this, uh, partly because uh, we've talked a fair bit about it in terms of both what makes a good intervention and what makes effective blended learning, um, but just really need to emphasise uh, that uh, basing everything we do in how students learn and the evidence around that is crucial. Um, we've seen professional development interventions in England in the last decade be funded, some of which just didn't have anything around this at all. So they said, well, we think teacher collaboration is a good thing. And so we want teachers to collaborate more, uh, but, but you know, collaborate to achieve what? We may collaborate productively or unproductively. And we've also seen the odd intervention creep through with theories of learning that, that really don't match the evidence. So theories which say, well, actually, the teacher should be as uninvolved as possible because students are just going to sort it out for themselves. Um, and obviously, the, we've got a, a strong basis for that through the NAPL and the, the pedagogical principles that are articulated there. Assuming we've got a good theory of student learning, what makes teachers or what helps teachers to change? Um, and we've got a you know clear, helpful set of characteristics that have come through lots of reviews. Uh, it needs to be subject specific, sustained. You can read these. Um, and the only problem, and these inform things like the English Department for Education Standards for Pro Professional Development, the only problem with them is that the evidence really doesn't support them as much as often is believed. Um, so you can find studies which try to make a carbon copy of uh, the points that I've just shown you, and yet have, don't have, and you know, implement it well, and yet don't have the desired effect. 
You can also find studies that don't do these things and do have the desired effect. So the reference I've put there, Alan and colleagues, and my teaching partner program uh, was instructional coaching. It wasn't subject specific, it wasn't collaborative, and yet it had a lasting impact on student learning. Um, and also, and you, you know, welcome to reround this, I won't throw you too deep into it. Um, essentially, the, the way that the various reviews have come to these principles has been to say, well, what did all these, what did successful studies have in common? Um, and as we are very familiar with, correlation is not necessarily causation. So it may be that all the uh, lots of successful professional development interventions have collaboration, but collaboration hasn't caused the improvement. It may just be that teachers are collaborating as part of it because it's convenient or because teachers like it. Um, and again, to link this to um, existing policies, uh, we know that in the, the professional teaching and leadership standards, it's very clear that teacher improvement should be critical and self-directed. It's not a matter of having a set of tick lists. It's a matter of fitting things to what teachers need. Um, so if, uh, if I'm saying that this, this list of characteristics we shouldn't be following, what should we be following? And this is the subject of the, the research programme that I'm working on at the moment. And the point we start from is lots of programmes have been evaluated by various funding bodies, uh, governments in different countries. And so we can look at programmes like these three um, and say that, well, embedding formative assessment seems to have a positive effect on student learning, whereas achievement for all seems to have a negative effect on student learning. Um, that's very useful if you want to buy one of those programmes. It's otherwise not hugely useful. What's more useful is be, to be able to look at uh, lots of different programmes and say, well, what do they have in common? And say, well, OK, we have a form. All of these are to do with uh, instructional coaching, so not a kind of um, uh, growth coaching model, not, not just sort of talking about what the teacher hopes to do, but offering really specific feedback, guiding a teacher to improve. And so we can look at the overall benefits uh, and we see that instructional coaching has quite powerful positive effects. The other thing we can do is we can break down these programs and look at the mechanisms, the behavior change mechanisms that they adopt. So, for example, the My Teaching Partner program has uh, uses modeling. So the teacher has shown video models of effective te teaching. Uh, they receive feedback. They receive kind of social support to so help planning the next lesson. And they're helped to monitor their own learning. So they video their own uh, teaching and are given prompts about how to um, uh, what they can what they might want to look at in that so the argument that i'm trying to make here is is we want to think about two things one what are overall kinds of professional development that help but perhaps most powerfully what are the mechanisms that would help teachers to adopt a change and make it work for them our current best bet is that you have to have mechanisms doing each of these four things so helping teachers to understand the the fundamental idea so that they can actually fit it to their context working with them to set clear goals, breaking the goals into small steps that are feasible in a lesson or in a week when you're really busy with everything else, and then maintaining that change so that it becomes a habit rather than doing it once, uh, quite liking it, but then being overwhelmed by everything else. Um, and if a mechanism works, we should find it in professional development programs and in basic research, and by basic research, I mean basic research into how humans think and learn and act. And so I can give quite a, a sort of simple heuristic to, 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 for this. We want teachers to know things and do things so we can find effective mechanisms in the science of learning and in the science of behaviour. And so uh, one thing that I appeal to uh, the teacher educators I work with to, to do quite often is just think, what would you do with your students? How do you help your students to hang on to ideas? How do you help your students to um, remember to apply them? adapted, we want to use similar techniques with our colleagues. Um, so let's assume we've, we've got a great theory of student learning and a great theory of teacher change. Stuff still goes wrong. Um, here are some gems that I've pulled out from recent evaluations. So if you put the training in, in an exam week, teachers probably aren't going to come. Uh, if you ask teachers to do masses of photocopying or adopt, adapt the resources, they're probably not going to implement it on a regular basis. And if you provide tech without thinking through what are all the ways that a year five class might struggle to use this, uh, it's unlikely to have the desired effect. Um, 
it, it's quite hard to, to dictate what you should look for in implementation. I'll share a few ideas in a second. And I find the easiest way to think about it is just, uh, it, it's about intense focus on the details. Um, and so I give the example of uh, the, the touring uh, and a very famous um, anecdote, which was that the band members uh, wanted to have their M&Ms without any brown M&Ms in, they wanted a bowl uh, in their rider, they wanted a bowl in the dressing room with loads of M&Ms, no brown ones. And this is often used as an example of um, how bands go over the top when they are successful. Uh, but the actual point of it is uh, that it's a way of checking, if you look at this, this sort of how complicated the, um, the stage machinery is, uh, small things like this are a way of checking if, uh, if attention has been paid to getting the M&Ms right, attention has probably been paid to getting the wiring right. It's not a perfect uh, heuristic, but it will do. If you see brown M&Ms in the jar, you've got a pretty good indication that things are uh, not going right. So the, the question that I'm posing here, I think, is um, which bits really matter? And how can we make sure, how can we find early indicators that things that matter are or aren't working? Things that come up in this area are things like, do we have leadership support? And particularly if there's a change in school leadership, I mean, you know, assistant head goes to another school or gets promoted. And if, if a project is their responsibility, sometimes it doesn't get handed over and doesn't last. Um, I say to teacher educators now, Ask teachers for as little time as possible. Teachers are so busy. Minimise what you're asking them for, making the resources easy to use, and then offering teachers flexibility, being tight about the things that matter and loose about as many things as you possibly can be. So the three things I'd ask you to, to take away from this. We need to get all three of these right if it's going to work. Um, we need to focus on the mechanisms that lead to teacher change. And we need to build on existing strengths. And here are a few that came out, particularly from the pilot workshop that we did.